Team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. For the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, then you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. And if you don't want to, that's fine. No problems. I love y'all, Team Keep It Clean. I appreciate y'all for always sharing your opinions and sharing how you feel about whatever the subject may be. Uh, respectfully, y'all keep that up. Love y'all, and let's get to these questions. First question came from my guy Sam. He said, hey, Graven, how's it going? Sending this Tuesday. And on Xbox, it says you're playing Lego Marvel 2. So is it you or Carter? It's actually both of us. It's both of us. We're playing together. It's a two-player game. Super fun. Love it. And we actually beat it the other day, by the way. Anyway, he said, no shame. It's a fun game. Anyway, I know we still have a chance at playoffs, but it's always fun to look at the draft early. I say we take the best tackle available unless uh, N'Kobe Dean, who's an inside linebacker, or Kyle Hamilton, who's a safety, by some miracle is available wherever we pick. We need line help, but we know they'll take best player available. What's your thoughts on our first pick? Uh, I say the first pick, it, it, it has to be a, a, a guy who um, is going to come in and make an immediate impact, and he is going to be um, a potential starter. Uh, as far as a tackle, you could do that. Um, you could. Because uh, Ronnie Stanley, he'll be back after, after his third ankle injury and his big surgery. Hopefully everything will be good to go. Um, you, uh, your other tackles coming back, possibly Alejandro Villanueva if he doesn't retire. Uh, Juwan James, we'll see how he does. Um, but anyway, uh, so a tackle with the first pick, you could, you could. I wouldn't be mad at that. Um, but Kyle Hamilton, safety, and, and as people tell me he's a rangy guy too, a rangy safety. Oh that, oh, that would be so beautiful, man, if we could get one of those. But I just, I feel like they want Brandon Stevens to really be that guy. I feel like they, they want to stick with him. Um, so we'll see. Uh, because if they were to draft the Kyle Hamilton, I feel like then what are you going to do with Brandon Stevens? Are you going to, what are you going to have him as like a hybrid role or something? What, what are you going to do with him? Um, so, yeah, I, with, with the first pick, uh, I would think that, they would do, minus the whole BPA stuff, um, probably a, a, an interior defensive lineman uh, who can consistently create uh, interior pressure because that would help out a lot, uh, especially with you getting ready to possibly lose uh, all three of the Monstars. Um, Brandon Williams, free agent, Calais Campbell retiring, and the free agent, and Derek Wolf. I think they're going to cut him. Um, and so you still got Matt BK, Broderick Washington. Uh, Jelly is also a free agent, too. Uh, so, yeah, I could see them re-signing Jelly, and I could see them uh, drafting an interior defensive lineman, somebody who, again, disruptive guy, disruptive guy. So that, that's what I think they'll end up doing with the first-round pick. If they do it for offense, um, I could see it being, uh, yeah, because all the, all the skill positions you got, you don't need to draft a receiver, no running back, obviously not a quarterback. Um yeah, I, if they went offense, the only thing they I see them doing with a first round pick would be an offensive lineman. The biggest issue we all talk about, but the front office has ignored. Next question came from my guy Manuel. Well, he said lately in the Twitter spaces, everyone is getting out their opinions on how to fix the Ravens. But one thing that has been a constant is the coaching. And yes, you can uh, say we won in the beginning, but those victories came from the sheer will to win the games, not coaching. Uh, how many times have we seen talent make plays uh, work instead of the plays maximizing the player's strengths in order for us to succeed as we should? I understand this year we had injuries in key positions, but we are still using our personnel as we still have our starters when we don't. Uh, they're not being used to their talents. And that is the key theme of this opinion on ra or, or rather rant that most Ravens or if not all Ravens fans are stating. Why do we use players in positions that they have no business being in? Versatility is good, but not when you need to do specific tasks. Uh, look at all the players that have eaten outside of Baltimore. Darius Smith, Judon, Correa, uh, Colegio Simile, Perryman, when healthy and many others. Uh, they have been used in their natural positions. Look at the way when he is only pass rushing, he is there every time, just lacks a bit more time as one to get the sex. Look at Bowser as well. Freeman, when the Ravens knew how to use him, 
Uh, Tyree Phillips as a guard instead of a tackle. Jefferson as a box safety instead of a free safety. Uh, after this season, I will go to Steve Bishotti and tell him to hold the coaching staff accountable since EDC might be too personally attached to them for him to do that. Stay safe and tell Carter to be great at school. Appreciate this, man. You will. Um, that is something that, yeah, it, it's been talked about a bit, but, yeah, not enough. Um, and that is a very, very good point that you bring up about the Ravens, um, them having special players, but them not playing them at their special uh, positions. Uh, Tony Jefferson was a great example of that. Camille Correa, another great, I mean, you a lot of great examples that you brought in. Uh, but those guys, they ring that alarm specifically because they were uh, Tony Jefferson and box safety, but they had him uh, dropping back in the coverage a lot. And they, they didn't use him like this guy. That's what, what made him special in Arizona. They used the exact opposite. Uh, they used him the exact, excuse me, the exact opposite way. Camille Correa was a pass rusher in college. You drafted him, and I think in the second round, I forgot when. But uh, then they, they put him at middle linebacker and wonder why he, he didn't have success. Matt Elam was another one. Box safety in college. You have him try to replace Ed Reed as a free safety and wonder why he was struggling. And you put him at slot corner, too, and you wonder why he was struggling. And it's, it's like, so Ravens are too familiar with this. So that, that is one problem that they definitely have. Uh, and, again, Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay, this guy catching screen passes in college. Uh, you getting him involved in the short passing game, and he, he'll make some stuff happen. Uh, they brought him in, and, and, and it, again, it was a COVID year. This year, they've been involving him a bit more, but they just been using him for jet sweeps, um, and they've been having him do those, continue to do those, and the end of rounds and the fakes to him on the end of rounds and all that. But so yeah, Ray, Ravens they tend to do that a lot. So hopefully, moving forward, that changes. But that's why I think it, it will really take. I, I do agree that EDC or Bashadi, they they need to hold the coaching staff very accountable. And let them know, like, hey, y'all need to open this thing up. We have weapons. Like, they got weapons. They got weapons for sure. And it's crazy. We're going into an offseason where, at least me personally, I can't speak for everybody, but we're going into an offseason where it's like, we don't need a wide receiver. And that's a beautiful thing. Next question came from my guy Alvin. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your family are doing well during this pandemic surge. It's getting crazy out here. LOL. Uh, but I wanted to know, how long do you think we will keep Tyler Huntley? I'm sure after this year's team's going to be calling. I don't want him to leave, but nobody comes to the NFL to be a backup. Just thinking about it makes me tear up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think with Huntley, um, I think they'll want to keep him another year. But if, if they get the right offer, the right offer, I think he will be gone. Um, I, I, I just, I can't see in them, I can't see them turning down draft picks because, you know, they, they love them draft picks, even if they draft somebody and they cut them or trade them away, but they love them draft picks. Um, but with Tyler Huntley, if, 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 if right price, like, like they always say, right, pl right price, right player, right? I think if they got the right price for Tyler Huntley, then he'd be gone. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, with Hollywood Brown proving and, and improving every season thus far, him having 981 as of right now, what's the realistic expectation of him being a Raven his entire career? Uh, it's crazy having two offensive players with 1,000 receiving yards, um, dealing with all the injuries. Been here since 96. We're in till we're not. Thanks for the channel. Hashtag team, keep it clean, and hashtag positive. Appreciate it, BB. Um, his entire career, that's tough, man. Um, and, and one thing, I, I just, that would be tough. I would love it, but... I just, I don't know, man, because it's a lot of pressure uh, that was applied when they took Hollywood as a first round pick back in 2019. But then two years later, yeah, two years later, they took Rashad Bateman as a first round wide receiver. So that was like, oh, OK, because when, when if, if you are if you a first round pick or not, if they if the, your team takes somebody, especially in the first round. When you're there too, it's like, whoa, hold up now. So um, I, I think this offseason, what, the, what they do with Hollywood this offseason, really over the next two offseasons, because this is the offseason where they have to choose whether they pick up his fifth-year option. If, and if they don't, it doesn't mean that he won't be in Baltimore for the foreseeable future. They could decline his fifth-year option but end up signing him to a contract extension a little early. 
Uh, or they could pick up his fifth year option and just wait it out a little bit. Um, or they could not pick up his fifth year option. And then after this year, he would go somewhere else. Um, so it's, it's going to be a very interesting next couple of years. Uh, we're going to find out exactly how they feel about Hollywood uh, moving forward. Um, but as far as him being with the Ravens his entire career, that's tough, especially as a wide receiver. Um, Ravens have never given a wide receiver a second contract that they drafted. Never, ever. Um, so I just, yeah, like if they getting ready to have a receiver, getting ready to be a free agent, then that receiver's gone. He's gone. Um, so let's we'll see. Hopefully Hollywood can break that mold. Uh, but yeah, we'll find out soon. Next question came from my guy, Makai. He said, pretty simple and upfront question. Do you think John Harbaugh should be fired? Or if you were EDC and Bashadi, would you fire him? Keep up the great work. I appreciate that, Makai. Um, for John Harbaugh, he, he doesn't even have to be fired. This is what I was saying in the video about all the changes that the Ravens need to make. Um, he would just have to be willing to change his philosophy, their philosophy, uh, and, and stop with the old school stuff. That's it. And if he wasn't willing to do that, I would say, hey, I love you. Thank you for everything. But we, we, we got to go in a different direction. Correct. Ravens, they, they have to go in a different direction. And again, it's not just based off of this year. It's based off of just the Ravens, period. It's based off of them, period. They, they have to go in a different direction. You do not want to see Lamar's uh, his just talents wasted down the drain. You don't want to see this offense's talents wasted down the drain. You don't want to see the defense. Just, you don't want to see this team's talents wasted down the drain. And, again, this team, the roster, they got a nice core of players. And if somebody else came in here, it would be harder for them to fail than it would be for them to succeed. Because Ravens got a nice group. They still had a draft coming up. We'll still have free agency. We'll still make trades and whatever. If, if, they got a safe, if they got a new coach, it would not be the end of the Ravens. It would not. So, um, again, it, Harbaugh does, wouldn't have to be fired. But he would have to be like a completely different Harbaugh. He would have to change a lot, a, a whole lot, because the way that this team is headed, um, they, they'll continue to be competitive for sure. Under Harbaugh and all that, they'll continue to be competitive, especially if they're healthy and da 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 da. But I just, I just don't see them going very far because I feel like they're they're limiting themselves. Especially on offense. Offense is the biggest thing, but I feel like they're limiting themselves. So I feel like they'll almost be sort of restricted. I know a lot of people, oh, Harbaugh, Super Bowl champion. Super Bowl winning coach. Yes. Yes. But it almost feels like that was in a different era of football. <laughs> that was so long ago. And no, coaches ain't going to win a Super Bowl every year. Well, unless you Belichick and Brady. But they ain't going to win a Super Bowl every year. So that those are not the expectations, and those should not be the expectations. But you, you want to see, especially this offense, you want to see them, like, really. They should be tearing it up. They should be tearing it up. They really should be. And they're like, there's no reason that this offense should be top two, three offenses in the league consistently. They got the weapons. They, like, they got the quarterback. They got it all. They got the weapons. But the way that they think, the way that their, their minds process football, they think, you know, oh, back, back then football, football, old school football. No, it's time to like, hey, spruce these things up. It's time to really get this thing going. But let's see. Next question came from a guy, Jamie B. He said, I hope you and the family are doing great in this new year. My question, and maybe you can agree, do you think that EDC already has our new young mind uh, offensive coordinator on the team already? Maybe a Mr. T. Martin or Keith Williams or maybe someone else. You know Eric plays chess, not checkers. Um, again, I, I, don't, I don't think it would be one of those two uh, if anything happened. Um, I, just, I, just, I just don't, th I don't think the Ravens will give them an opportunity. I don't know why. I just, I just don't think that they will give either one of those two guys a, a, a shot. Um, that would be something. I think they will look at James Urban first before anything. Um, but then I'll be worried that it may be a lot of the, the same stuff uh, that we, we, we've seen already. Um, since he's been around for so long, been a QB coach for the past couple of years and whatnot. So 
I, so yeah, I, I would love if one of those two got it, but I just, I don't see the Ravens giving it to them. Next question came from Karthik. He said, let me start by saying that your videos are really good and I get all the Ravens information I need to know directly from you. I appreciate it. Uh, when I was younger, I used to watch Final Drive every day, but the videos were only two to three minutes long. Your videos have so much more detail and I appreciate what you do. I'm also a diehard Ravens fan and I grew up in Owings Mills, only a few miles away from the Under Armour Performance Center. Oh, so you were right there. Right there, you, you could probably smell them sweating when they finished their workouts. Uh, anyway, <laughs> he said, I'm not sure whether these questions have been asked already before, but number one, who do you think should replace Greg Roman if the Ravens decide to let him go this offseason? Um, I would say uh, probably a T. Martin or Keith Williams. Um, but if they hire somebody from the outside, I would say it cannot be anybody that ever worked with John Harbaugh before or worked with Jim Harbaugh before. Nobody's. Nobody's. No friends, no family. None of that. Um, because it, I just, I, I, would, I, would, I would want somebody that um, hasn't peaked. I would also want somebody that could put some pressure, put some pressure on John Harbaugh. I want somebody that um, possibly somebody that might not have ever been an offensive coordinator before, but somebody who's on the come up, not somebody who's been up and they on their way down or on their way out. Um, so who that could be, not sure, but no buddies, no nepotism, no friends, no family. That would be my requirement. Uh, number two, he said, if the Ravens are going to make some moves such as trading Tyler Huntley, uh, who do you think they'll want to add on their roster? Um, well, depending on what happens with Justin Houston, we can get another veteran pass rusher, um, defensive lineman since, again, Calais Campbell, Brandon Williams, Derek Wolf. I think they'll all probably be going. Uh, you may be able to keep one of them. Um, probably if Calais decided not to retire, we'll see. Uh, veteran backup corner, uh, because Jimmy Smith, he'll probably be going. Um, and it, again, it all just depends on how this. How, how the roster moves go. Tay-Tay, we'll see what happens with him. That's a big one. Uh, so somebody to, to cover the slot. So, yeah, well, that's, that's, so that, that's, a, that's a tough question because it's so much that could happen and so much that will happen too. But uh, we'll know soon, like really soon, well, after the playoffs and stuff because they, they, they can start cutting people and, and right, right before free agency stuff. Oh, boy. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to happen fast, so be ready. Anyway, uh, number three, Lamar Jackson is a great quarterback, but he still needs to become a much better passer and become more consistent upon returning from his recent injury. Do you think the Ravens should hire a better quarterbacks coach? Uh, maybe bringing in someone like Michael Vick. No, not Michael Vick. Uh, even if this may make the headlines, hiring Kaepernick to sort of mentor him could be an innovative approach. No, not Kaepernick either. Uh, I don't know much about James Urban, but I think it's critical that having someone who has a similar quarterback as Lamar as a coach can get him back to becoming as electric as he used to be in 2018. Oh, I think you mean 2019, but either way, um, it, it, would, it would serve them best to, uh, if they got a new quarterback coach, um, somebody that's played quarterback before and done it very, very well. Um, Vic was, ooh, he was, I mean, Kaepernick was, he, he, Kaepernick was hot for a little bit too now, of course. Um, but we know, we, we know they, they not hiring Kaepernick. Um, with Vic, uh, I, 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 I would just, yeah, Vic, oh, well, I guess Vic, uh, as a QB coach though, I don't know, man. But I, I would want somebody who did a really good job of seeing the field. Um, I, I want somebody who did a, did a great job of going through their progressions um, and they did it consistently at a high level. Um, just somebody with that experience. So somebody with that experience who's done it in the league before. Um, so that who that could be. I know, man, somebody, oh, I forgot who it was. Somebody had suggested uh, Peyton Manning or uh, Drew Brees. I'm like, them dudes, they, they ain't about to come to the Ravens and be no coaches. Um but I don't know. I, I really don't know a name off the top of my head. Uh, but that, that's what I would want for Lamar, like whether it was as an offensive coordinator. Because that's why a lot of people would tee. Because, it, yeah, it's T. Martin who used to be a quarterback, who used to actually play quarterback. He used to actually play quarterback. 
So that's why a lot of people, well, I don't know if that, that's their thinking, but that's one of the reasons why he could have some success and, and it, it could, because of his experience, because he's been there before. Not as, just as a coach, but as a player. He's played the position. So he can see it differently than somebody who hasn't played the position and they just coached. So that would be an added bonus if he took over. But as far as quarterback coach, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. Next question came from Leeson. He said, Engraven, I know we haven't seen Lamar in four weeks, but I saw someone in your chat after the Rams lost mention Lamar's struggles after his flip touchdown in week two. And that got me thinking. Could the back problems he had in week three to four still have had something uh, that he was dealing with throughout the season without mention, causing him to slow down more and more as the season progressed? It could have been. It could have been. That, that is a possibility. Um, that, that whole the, the flip where he landed a little bit awkwardly, but did, it, did it hurt him more than, more, than, uh, more than we were led to believe? Maybe. It could have. Um, what I would need to do, uh, because, again, he, he just has not been looking himself. What I, I need to look at that Chiefs game. I need to watch it and see how he was running. Um, because I, I don't remember the game where we, we really started seeing, like, man, this guy, like, he ain't, this, ain't, this ain't Lamar. This ain't the regular Lamar. He ain't running. He ain't himself. It was early on in the season, but I just don't remember exactly when it was. But I need to look at that Chiefs game and see how he was running early on in the game. And see how he was running after that flip, and just 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 to really see it, um, to see if and to see, and I need to need to look at the game after too, which was the Lions game, uh, to see how he was running in that game too, uh, to really give you a fair answer. And what could possibly be the last question uh, from subscriber for the regular season uh, came from my boy Droid Two O Nine because I'm recording this on Friday at nine thirty in the morning. Y'all will see this probably like on Saturday, maybe Saturday evening or something. We'll see. But yeah, this is this is probably it. Now, question from subscribers ain't going nowhere. But for the regular season, that's it. That's it. So, wow. That's um mm, this is so this this is special. This is a special question right here. Cause this is uh this this closes out most likely. Probably and I'm nine times out of ten sure that this closes out question from subscribers for the regular season of 2021 and 2022. So anyway, my guy, and, and it's funny, this question is called 2022-2023. So shout out to my guy, Droid209. He said, my guy Engraven, listen, man, I just want to thank you for doing what you do. I uh, started listening to you heavily this year and enjoyed every minute of it. It's good to know we have Ravens fans that even in the thickness of the mud that we got ourselves in, you remain loyal and keep us loyal. Uh, you remind us that this organization is something special. Uh, this year didn't go our year. But I believe that next season will be our year. Uh, wow, I don't, I don't, I don't know why this is making me emotional a little bit, man. But we got my eyes watering up and stuff. Maybe because it's like, like this is like, again, this is special, man. Because it, this is like the end of. Uh, I'm just thinking about this year, man. It's just, uh, wow, it's been a year, man. This has been a, a, a crazy year, um, and I just feel like uh, it's been fun. Um, we we've all like had a lot of growth together um it's been fun with all the the collaborations that we've done for questions from subscribers bringing a bunch of different people on um but it loved it uh it's just been a lot of fun this year it's been a lot of work but a lot of fun so i appreciate it um uh, anyway he said um hopefully get the people that were out all season back uh the draft if we keep and draft smart uh, we will get a refresh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, you said in my last question that you weren't a teacher, but my guy, you are. Uh, you teach us to be patient and always keep it clean. I, I, I don't know why. I don't know why this comment, like, this is just hit me like this, man. I, I, I don't know why, man. But I, <laughs> anyway, you said you teach us to be patient and always to keep it clean. I don't know how this last game will go. I hope a miracle happens, but we shall see. <laughs> Sorry for the rant. Just got to thank the man that spends his hours making sure that we receive content. Keep it up, coach. You still Uncle Engraven? You're that uncle at the barbecue. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> wow. And it, it's almost like he knew, like, like that this was going to be the last question, the way that he, uh, he ended it off. Because it, it just, it's, it's just crazy how that, that worked itself out. Um, because a lot of times, well, actually all the time, when I'm going through the questions and stuff, uh, for questions from subs, I will. Um, I don't pick the emails like necessarily in the order that I receive them. 
I just pick pick random ones. I just pick random emails and then do the questions. Um so yeah, man. I, I appreciate this a lot. Thank you and um thank you for, for closing us out the right way. I love y'all team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. And again, the the videos ain't going nowhere. Um, but this uh for this to be the end of the regular season is it's it's been it's been something special. So thank y'all for making it special. Uh, thank y'all for making it a lot of fun. Um, it, it's just been a great ride. Man. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. Shout out to Graven.